That sound is an unmistakable sound of a Marshall. Great amps, great throughout the history of rock and roll. Unfortunately, some of the new ones have some problems, and on my bench I've got one, so we're going to go through how to fix that. The beast I'm working on today is the JVM 410. It's a 100 watt amp, and it shares a lot of characteristics that other modern Marshalls do, including being PCB based. It's pretty well documented that while sounding great when they work, these modern Marshalls have a lot of issues. Blowing tubes, bias all over the place. And so this is the way that you take care of that. If you've suffered from that, hopefully this will be a helpful video for you. And then of course there's the safety note. If you haven't worked on tube amps before or you're new to electronics, I suggest you do a lot of reading and understanding how to make sure to dissipate any charge that would be left in the capacitors. I'll put a link in the description. You can go through that. But please do your homework. I don't want to hear of anyone shocking themselves. Sometimes 400 volts can be pretty tough. Now let's get started. To do any work on a tube amp, you're going to need to remove the chassis. The chassis is the metal box that has all the volume and tone controls. Also, the tubes are generally plugged into it. For the Marshall, it's pretty easy. Four screws, you slide it out. Just be careful not to break any tubes. Also, it's very heavy because it has two very heavy transformers. As you can see, this amp has a lot of components inside and it can maybe be a bit intimidating, but this fix should be pretty easy. As with most modern amps, this has a fixed adjustable bias, and you'll see that there are two very small pots and a place where you connect your leads to measure the bias. And Marshall has designed this amp so it's actually fairly difficult to adjust your bias. You have to get in here and then you have to take a very small screwdriver while measuring both sides. In the picture are both pots and I'm going to zoom in here in a second to show you a little bit more about it. As I zoom in here you can see the pot labeled VR2. You turn the center dial on that to either add or subtract bias voltage. And just as a reminder, bias voltage is in place to limit the rate of current flowing through a tube. To achieve this, negative DC voltage is applied through the grid of the tube. Additionally, these three prongs that come off of what's labeled CON1 is where you measure the bias. It's not really set up in a safe way and I have a nice little suggestion here on how you can get over that or overcome it and be safe while you do the adjustments. Finally, you will see that there is a resistor here that has a nice little black mark on it, meaning it's been fried. This is actually a shunt to ground for the tubes, and it makes it so that you can read the bias in volts. If you see that one or both of these resistors are fried like this, you can count on the fact that too much current has been flowing through the tubes, and there is a bias issue. To safely measure bias, I suggest that you make a Molex 3-pin connector and connect those wires somewhere outside of the chassis so you can easily look at each side of the tube without worrying about touching anything or blowing yourself up. It's very easy to make one of these and they slide right on CON1. Once you put it in there, you can keep your hands out of harm's way. As we look at the schematic, there are two parts of the circuit board that we are really interested in. First is the power section coming off the power transformer, both the bias and the high tension, or where all the power tubes get their power from, are located here. And you can see as I zoom in, we'll come over here and take a look at this where it says WP12. That's basically the B plus section of the power. All high voltage, somewhere between 2 and 400 volts coming through there. This other section of the secondary shows where the power comes for the bias. You see here it's labeled there are two bias pots. For both of these sections there are a few components such as resistors and capacitors but they are unlikely to be damaged or need replacing with the exception of the high tension fuse. Now we jump over to the power tube section where you can actually see how the bias supply voltage gets to the tubes. And although a bit blurry, you can see R26 is the 1 ohm shunt resistor, which earlier I showed had some burn marks on it. There's one of these for each pair of tubes. Keep an eye on these. High current will destroy the resistor. 
If we jump back over to the power supply, you'll see the fuse labeled FS6. This generally goes if there's any sort of current issue going on. And the symptoms basically are that you're playing your instrument, everything is going great through the amp, and then out of nowhere, your amp dies. Then you panic. You actually go look at the fuse that's where the power plug plugs into the back, and it's not blown, and you have no idea what's going on. This fuse's job is to blow if there's too much current coming through or your tubes are going out of control having to do with your power tubes. And the only reason this should occur is because you either have a wiring problem inside or you're running on bad tubes. So if you're going to track this down and try to figure out where your problem is, you need to dig into the bias section of the schematic. To get to the tube, the bias voltage travels through a grid stopper resistor. In this case, you see listed R33 or R36. From there, it goes to the tube at pin 5. So essentially, you have a negative voltage going into pin 5. But all the other pins are basically getting positive voltage, and this is where the real issue is. Unfortunately, due to the design of the circuit board, positive and negative voltages sometimes mix together at pin 5. This is well documented. You can see there are other videos on YouTube where they show this. And the only real solution is to isolate pin 5 so it has no chance of receiving positive voltage. With all that said, there are then a few things that need to be done. First, that resistor that's blown up, we have to replace that. Second, we have to pull the circuit board out and we need to isolate pin 5. This is for all four of the EL34 power tubes. To start this process, you've got to get the circuit board out, and I'll just give you a warning ahead of time. There are a lot of connectors on that circuit board, more than 15, so get out a pen and paper and write them down. The color-coded wires and the uh, numbers that they go to, you might even want to take a few pictures. Just to make a point of that, you can see inside the empty chassis, lots of wires and connectors. Once out, if you look at the other side of the circuit board, you'll see that the tube sockets are mounted to the board. That's a lot of heat going on with that board and probably this is the reason why the bias drift and the conductivity takes place. Highlighted here in the box is pin 5 for V2 but all four of them have it in the exact same spot. This is what you're going to need to isolate. On a side note, this amp can be pretty noisy in the OD section. To deal with that Usually you try to make everything as quiet as possible and most manufacturers use a filter choke. Unfortunately Marshall left one out in this amp. There are plenty of videos on how to do that but just to show you really quick the filter choke replaces this R106. For more on what chokes do look at the video that I've labeled below. Installing a choke is fairly easy. There are some great videos about it. You really just need to pull one resistor and then mount the choke on the chassis. To do the isolation of pin 5, you need a special drill bit that is recommended by Dr. Tube over in the Netherlands. It's really a 5 millimeter glass cutting bit. They're pretty inexpensive and it makes it really easy. I picked up a set on Amazon for under $15. You really only need the 5 millimeter. So on with the surgical procedure to make this amp work properly again. After desoldering as much of the pin as I could, you see that I chucked it up put it on my drill press and drill down carefully just through the board. It's pretty quick and painless but you need to do this for all four of the power tubes. When you finish it will look like this. There will still be a little bit of circuit board around the pin but you can pull those out using a dental pick and your soldering iron. The final step in isolating pin 5 in the bias circuit is that you need to remove the leg of the grid stopper resistor that would be connected to pin 5 on the circuit board. You just do a direct connection and solder. After doing this, it's time to put everything back together and back in the chassis. And then I highly suggest doing some testing without any tubes in place. In particular, make sure you measure negative voltage somewhere around negative 50 volts on pin 5. Make sure to leave it on there for a bit. Make sure it stays consistent. After verifying the bias voltage, now it's time to bias the tubes. Put them in and see what you get. Um, when I did this, I was able to track down that I had a bad tube, which was likely blown due to this bias issue and probably why I saw the amp in the first place. If you're happy with everything, put it back in. Play the instrument, see how it goes, test it out. 
You'll notice in this picture I actually show the choke that I added sitting right beside the transformer in the phase inverter tube. So now in summary, we can talk a little bit about what we did here. To deal with blowing fuses and also having a destroyed shunt resistor, uh, it seemed the best thing to do was tackle the possibility of runaway bias and connectivity on the board. I chose to completely separate pin 5 from the board using a drill bit and making sure to solder on the resistor. And then also to deal with some of the noise and other things going on, I added a filter choke. Hopefully this is helpful. There are a lot of articles out there talking about this, but so far I have not seen a video on this. Um, if you have questions or comments, please let me know. Again, I do want to warn everybody, working on amps can be dangerous. Make sure you do a little homework before you just dig in there. Otherwise, you can get a nice high-voltage surprise. Thanks a lot. Take care.